It's the champ, Shannon the Cannon Briggs, two-time heavyweight champion in the world, and this is my story from my mouth. Let's go, champ. What made me overcome the hardship, survival of the fittest, self-preservation, self-preservation. How bad do you want to survive? How bad do you want to live? How bad do you really want to live? I was born premature. I weighed less than two pounds at birth. I have no brothers or sisters growing up. My mom was an addict. No father, nobody that you know. Keep no role models. I had a, you know, I had a weird, crazy life. <clears throat> Obviously, I could have went anyway, but I had a strong will to survive. My will to survive is strong. You know what I mean? So that's what it is. I have a strong will to survive and to be successful. You know what I mean? Did Did you have anyone? close to you that doubted you as a boxer? Everybody doubted me as a boxer. Nobody believed in me as a boxer. I hardly believed in me as a boxer. I, I didn't even believe in me as a boxer. I didn't have any belief in me as a boxer. I had belief in me as a survivor. And people even said, oh, you're just a survivor. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Call me what you want, but I did what I did and I made it because I could have gave up, I could have died. I could have went to prison. You know what I mean? I could have did so many other things, but I kept I kept my will to survive. So who would, who are the people that you would credit <clears throat> to to let you know that you could do it and help you be successful in your boxing career? Me. No trainers. Shout out to me. No nobody. Shout no out trainers, to me. nobody. Shout out to me. Me, when I was sleeping on the train, I was hungry. When I was sitting on the train tracks, I was sitting on the platform many days, waiting for the train, freezing. Holes in my shoe, my Reeboks, pair of socks on, you know what I mean? Freezing cold, waiting to see I'm gonna jump in front of the train when it's time, I don't care. Nowhere to go, sit on the train all night, going. You know what I mean? Think about what I'm going to do. Maybe if I go to jail, you know what I'm saying? That can traumatize you as a teenager. But then you go to fine boxing and it changed my life. So that's what I'm saying. People need to know that more gyms need to be open. Kids need an alternative. Kids need another place other than the streets. Boys, girls need to be into gyms, finding gyms that can save their lives. Because it saved mine, you feel me? I guess you credit the gym as well, huh? I, I, I credit myself for going to the gym and I credit all those in my life. When I say me, I say I say the universe too, I'll be honest with you, because it was all everybody in my story is a part of it. <clears throat> Even you, you know what I'm saying? It's a story. Well, if I had to think about it, who helped me be successful in my career, I'd have to say it'd be, it'd be many people, to be honest with you. Uh, like anything, it's like a tree, you know? It's many roots, you know, as many roots to a tree and then there's many branches. So there's many roots to be honest with you. So many people helped me. Uh, of course, I, you learn from many teachers. My mom was a teacher, of course, my first teacher. Uh, my, my, to me, my, my, my biggest teacher was her. And then there were many along the way, even friends that I learned lessons from, harsh lessons, uh, smart lessons. I, I learned many from watching, just learning and watching, observing listening and then um, you learn some harsh lessons you learn some harsh lessons from <clears throat> actually doing it and say okay that was a bad one actually touching the fire but along the way there were many people that was very instrumental in my success and there was some instrumental in my in my failures and a lot of times it was myself um as a young person i made a lot of good decisions to not get in trouble 
to walk away and to go into the right direction, to get into boxing and to not go down a dark path, which was selling drugs or, you know, um, using my anger or my hardship for, to, for negativity, you feel me? I could have went down that path easily, but I chose to, I was fortunate to, you know, find boxing. It wasn't easy for me to, you know, it wasn't an easy choice or path. It wasn't like, oh, I got boxing now, let me just be a boxer. It was, it was the hardest thing in the world to be a boxer for me. You know, it was, I, I, I started at 16, um, I had asthma. It was winter time, New York. I, I never excelled in the winter. I was the worst asthmatic you could ever have. You feel me? I was bad off. I spent every winter in the hospital. Um, I didn't have proper nutrition. You know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't have the, the, I was homeless. I was living in here and there everywhere. So how you gonna be a boxer? You feel me? How you eating right? How you, you know what I mean? So I was in and out of, you know, arrest, being arrested, in and out of sleep in different places. It wasn't until I was like 18, after two years of dabbling with the boxing, that I said, yo, this is it. I gotta give this thing a run. And at 18, I got a little serious for a year. It wasn't popping. It popped for like a year. And then I, t I was like, yo, it ain't moving. And then I, you know, that's when they gave me that call. You know, after that year, they gave me that call. And um, it, it was moving and then it wasn't moving no more. And then I made another run and then it took off, you feel me? <clears throat> so it was, it was a quick two year run really that, you know what I'm saying, changed my life, to be honest with you. You know, two years really changed my life. But, and throughout that year, throughout those two years, it was a lot of people. One main person was Jimmy O'Farrell. He had that gym, Star City Boxing Gym, where I started. <clears throat> it was the nucleus for my beginning of my boxing career. I went to Star City and my life changed forever. Let's go, champ. That's a good one. Excuse me. All right, so for you, when you, you, you think about everything, the good things, what is the highlight of your journey? If you died today, hmm. what would be the highlight of your journey? The highlight of my journey? Wow, it's a great question. Choke. <laughs> the highlight of my journey is my kids, man. They, they were born. You know what I mean? My wife, my kids, you know what I mean? Just the fact that um, I survived, I made it to, that, to see their life. I'm here to see their lives. A lot of people don't live to see their kids, you know, and I'm fortunate. I'll be blessed if I get to see grandkids, you know? That'd be a blessing if I'm ever to see grandkids. Like I said, I'm not who would have thought I'd make it this far. And here I am, you know? My mom died on my birthday, December 4th, 1996. We suffered a lot. You know, here I am now with kids, two boys and the girl. I look at them every day and like, wow, this is amazing. I don't take it for granted. I look at it now like this is real. Sometimes we could just take things for granted, like this ain't real. You know, like, oh, you know, I got this, I got that. I look at it and I say, wow, this is amazing. I got a, a daughter. You know, I remember the days when me and my mom didn't have anything. Got a place to sleep. And we would just cry ourselves to sleep, you know, sleeping in my aunt's basement or on someone's couch, you know? Mm -hmm. And now I look at my kids and my home and I say, wow, look how far I've come, you know? You can't take life for granted. You know, especially if you become successful. You know what I mean? Then you gotta fight to keep it. That's a whole nother journey and a whole nother life, keeping it. Because once you make it, you know, it's the hardest thing is to, is to keep it. This is Shannon Briggs, and you're watching my story with Choke No Joke. Let's go, champ!